So the house that you live in started off not being a house, but being a beer section. Nothing on it. And of course, there's a lot of development that goes on before that house can even be built. Now here at Wigram Skies, we've got a huge subdivision. Steve, what has happened to develop the land? Well, as we've seen over the last few days, there are lots of things involved with uh, houses that are required. Um, first of all, we start out, like we heard from Itahu, with a master plan, which sets out the roads, the sections. But there's actually more to it than that as well. In addition to that, we have to set out the services. Every house needs to have water supply. Every house needs to have a sewer. So when we flush our toilets and we wash things in the kitchen sink, the water goes away. As you've seen today, sewers are put under the ground quite deep, so that's dangerous work, and we saw the guys with the diggers and the shutters to keep them safe as they did that. So sewers are put in so that water can be taken away, but we also have other services like water supply and stormwater. You also saw today the large two metre stormwater pipe connecting to the local drainage system, and we also saw the stormwater basins which retain the water that when it rains. So when it rains we have a lot of water running off the ground and we need to make sure the houses don't get flooded and people can move around on the streets without having a problem. So that large green basin that looks like a park actually stores the stormwater for us so that we don't have any problem. As the land is um, developed it needs to be shaped so that all the sections are at the right height and in the right place. And today we saw the bulldozer with the GPS on the blade. And if we remember, we saw how GPS worked the other day with the satellite. So when the digger driver is driving his bulldozer, he's actually linking to the satellite network and to the base stations so that he can uh, push the ground around and make sure that the roads and the sections are constructed at the right level. Okay, so yet another use for GPS. Now, that's kind of the below surface stuff, all the services underground that we may take for granted but obviously take a lot of effort to construct. What about above ground? Is there GPS used for um, other things for property development? It certainly is. And GPS is, is a, a surveying technology that we use for everything. So not only do we use GPS for locating the services, but we also use GPS for the set out. And what, we, what gets done is construction pegs are used and they tend to be green and they're, they're quite large and stick out the ground. And they're used so that the digger drivers can see where certain boundaries are going to be or the edge of a road is, which helps them know where they're going to do their work. So GPS is used for surveying the section boundaries. And we need section boundaries because when people are going to buy a house or buy a section, they need to know exactly where the land is that they're buying. So pegs for section locations are very important. You would have seen today when the surveyor was setting out using his mobile GPS that he set out and he set a peg in the ground and these finished pegs are white and they have labels chiselled into them and you would have seen a peg today with the number 205. So that was the 205th section constructed in Wigram Sky subdivision. And so as the sections are set out we also add to them fences so that people get a clear view on where their property boundary is going to be. Okay, so that's how you set out the section. What about where you put the house on that section? How do you know where to do that? Well, that's really important too. And the Christchurch City Council and other district councils have rules about houses are set out on sections. So once again, we need plans and maps to show us that as well. So the council um, have rules around how sections are set out and people apply. And if the house meets the structural standards and meets the planning standards for where it's set out, then they will get consent and allowed to build the house. So houses are built along the street and get finished and constructed and then people can actually buy those houses and move into them and then it's ready uh, because the services is in, the streetscape's gone, you can see all the new houses in the street and people can live in and get on with their lives. And they know exactly where everything is located. So from this you can appreciate just how much is going into the rebuild of Christchurch.